Hi everyone, welcome to Cosmic Resort. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I make my videos. I'm going to take you through each step. Also, I'm going to share with you the processes and different softwares that I use to create my videos. For this video, I'm going to show you the coffee shop scene I made for my channel. But first, let me show you the final version and then we can start our journey. Welcome to Cosmic Cafe. Enjoy your coffee with great music. Have fun. I like to start my scene with simple shapes and transfer ideas to 3D from the prior sketches I made for this scene. In this step I like to play with different camera angles and I also like to explore better placement of objects. That is why sometimes my final work comes out quite different than the sketches I made earlier. I find it quite exciting to get inside a 3D scene and get a feeling of where the camera should be and where I want my focal point to be. At this stage I like to play with lighting too. Lighting is a big part of the work I do. It helps me create a focus area, push some objects into background while bringing others into the foreground. Depending on my work, the first step is probably the one that takes the most of my time. After I'm satisfied with the overall design, I start working on the details, such as object modeling or texturing. Since I would like to show you all the steps of my project, now I would like to take you to the second step, which I'm going to talk about the character design process. I use character creator software to create my characters. This is another fun step in creating the scene. Because in this software, it is quite easy to modify your character's features with simple sliders. This easy interface really helps users to focus on the creative part of the process. Actually, this is the scene I'm introducing Cosmic Resort's first human characters. So in the process, I explored different character designs from more realistic approaches to more cartoonish styles. I will say that my characters are somewhere in between. So after I'm satisfied with the character's design, I'm going to move this character to iClone software to create a character animation. For this character, I started the animation by adding a pre-made motion to my character. As you can see here, I added an animation which the character is working on a laptop. But this pre-made motion will not fit perfectly with the objects in my scene. To make this animation work, I need to make some adjustments to her body position. To do that, I import the objects into iClone and adjust her leg and arm positions. After I'm done with the adjustments, now I want to modify this animation to create an interaction between my character and the cat which is lying on the table. To do that, again, I play with her arm and body positions. And while doing that, I make sure that her hand is not intersecting with any other object on the way. I also decided to make her head move and smile while petting the cat to achieve a more realistic and meaningful animation. As you can see, this is how it's going to look when it's done. And these are the other characters I have created for this scene.
As a next step, I would like to quickly talk about a closing simulation I made for the main character in my scene. This is the character I'm using in the opening part of my scene. And this character's details are going to be seen in close-up by the viewers. That is why I want this character to have a more realistic cloth simulation. To achieve that, I used Marvelous Designer software. In this software, clothes of the character will be affected by its movements. Since character's pants will not be seen in details, I decided to only simulate his sweater and scarf. And after it's calculated, this is the final result. Before I start rendering, there is one more step that I would like to share with you. And this is the step that I create the clouds in my scene. To design these clouds, I use Embergen software. In this powerful software, you can simulate volumetric simulations in real time, such as smoke and fire effects. All you have to do is to start with a simple shape and move sliders to achieve the result you want. And this is how it looks in my scene when it's completed. After I'm done with the previous steps, now it is time to put them all into my scene and start rendering. For rendering, I'm using Octane Render for Cinema 4D. To make rendering process more efficient, I decided to separate my scene into 5 different layers. Because I don't want Octane Render to calculate background objects while I'm rendering animated frames of other layers. When I'm rendering these layers, I'm using Octane Render passes. With Octane Render, it is very easy to separate objects into different render passes. Another reason for rendering my scene in different layers is to actually have flexibility when composing. I can add different color adjustments for different layers in Premiere Pro. I can also add visual effects between layers when composing, such as smoke and rain effects. By rendering these layers separately, I will be able to control and adjust their looping animations in different intervals from each other. To explain this better, let's go to Premiere Pro for the final step of this project. In this step, I would like to show you my layers one by one, starting from the backmost layer. In the background, I have the animated clouds. And on top of that, I have placed the skyscrapers. And above that layer, I have the main street, which consists of the houses and the road. Above that, I added a layer to animate red flashing lights of these skyscrapers. Even though these details are not seen directly by the viewers, I believe that these small details are perceived by the viewers somehow and make the video more lively. On top of that, I have another layer which turns the room lights on and off. After them, now it is time for one of the main attractions of the scene. In this layer, I have used a render pass to render the vehicles and their reflections. As you can see, I am using two different loops here. Green one is a loop with the tram and the other one is a loop with only the cars passing. I have placed them one after another, so in the final video, tram is passing by the street every 5 minutes or so. And now I would like to talk about the rain layer. To create this rain effect, I have used X-Particles plugin for Cinema 4D. With this plugin, I was able to create splashes for rain particles. 
I rendered the rain effects as black and white footage and used screen blending mode to place it on top of the background layers. I have also added two different fog layers on top. I believe that this created a more realistic atmosphere for the outside. And as the next layer, I placed a footage which I created in After Effects to create a realistic raindrop effect on Windows. As you can see, these raindrops are reflecting the background lights as it would happen in real life. And here on top, I have the window reflections. And finally, my top two layers are the interior layers. And the background layer is looping every 1400 frames. While the videos of the front room are separated into sequences, which are made of 700 frames each. Each of these sequences are different animations, such as the one with the girl drinking a coffee or petting the cat, or simply studying. Since all starting and ending frames of these animations are the same, I can arrange them in completely random orders to create a more engaging final composition. And as you can see, with the green color here, I have the entrance scene footage, which only plays once at the beginning of this video. Well, that is it for today's video. Before I show you the final scene, I would like to thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed my presentation of how I make my videos. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. I would also love to hear your suggestions. Have a relaxing day. Welcome to Cosmic Cafe. Enjoy your coffee with great music. Have fun. <laughs>